want to take this time as I finish framing up the last gable end of the home not to take you through that process because I've shown you that already but I want to take this time to do some roof FAQs these are questions that we have been asked throughout the multiple videos we've already released on putting on a new roof on our mobile home and I want to take this second to address them probably the number one question we have been asked on this project is will the house hold the extra weight of this roof for us in our home yes we're confident it will now you might be wondering how are you confident how do you know such things and that's because we have the original data sheet or spec sheet from this home when it was built way back in 1988 and it lists the roof trusses their live load dead load snow load capacities and everything of the such and we have calculated together using mathematical anomalies to determine yes we are comfortable doing this to our house in our area where we live as always doesn't mean you should do it to yours second most popular question we get is around the materials we used as far as quantities and types and stuff of that nature the home is decked out with 5 8 inch plywood we chose to do plywood because of its strength and durability over time and as far as holding up to the weather as opposed to osb now i think the actual differences between plywood and osb are pretty nominal nowadays as technology is really caught up but i just went with plywood personal choice i bought 40 sheets of plywood for this roof over and i had a couple of leftover when everything was said and done but i wanted to make sure when i ordered it i got enough to do the whole project i also used two by fours for a lot of the framing of the eaves overhangs and the gable ends i think i used probably close to 30 two by fours and two by sixes i used for all of the sub fascia boards here on the eaves and on the gables and i used a total of 24 of those at 10 feet long as far as attaching the plywood to the house, we used three and a half inch long galvanized ring shank nails and about 1200 of those. And then as far as assembling all of the eave, rafter, soffit, overhang, framing bits with the two by fours and two by sixes, I used three and a half inch long exterior grade screws. And I think I used about 750 of them. The last thing is what you see behind me a little bit and what I constantly fight with, and that's the synthetic underlayment. It is a TriFlex name brand and is extremely durable and has held up wonderfully as this project has taken its time to develop. Another question we have gotten originally when we were putting everything together and we shot the tools I need for the project, I think I have it all together video, I showed you plywood clips that I was going to put between all the sheets of plywood as we decked out the top of the home. And that was kind of the last thing that got mentioned. If you guys remember when you saw it, there were no plywood clips being used. And so obviously we got asked why. We started off using the plywood clips to begin with and put it in between a couple of the sheets but found out that once the clips were in place as we walked over and around the area there's still some flex to the roof it's just how it is with the mobile home and the trusses it's still going to be flexible a little bit and we noticed that over time those clips would kind of bend and end up poking up and i knew immediately that that would translate through the synthetic underlayment probably tear it and then it would also for sure translate and poke little dimples and the new metal roof we're going to put over top of it eventually so in that case we did not use the plywood clips and we just spaced all of the sheets of plywood about the eighth inch apart that they need for expansion and contraction and it's good we're not worried about it a couple of people have asked as they've seen us toil with taking the old gutters off the mobile home why didn't you just take the gutters off the house to begin with before you started the project on older manufactured mobile homes like what we have here and you have the original metal roof those old gutters are what are holding your roof on so in our case we did not do that because we didn't want our roof to blow away now if you're thinking about this project yourself and i'll touch on this later whenever i talk about being a youtuber trying to do projects but if you're doing the project yourself if you're doing it in like one day then yeah rip the old gutters off throw down your plywood same day and you're good to go in our case we weren't able to work that fast so that's why we kind of made it harder on ourselves and did it in the order of operations that we did another question high on the list and i'm sure a lot of you are wondering just if you're wanting to do it yourself or just nosy in general i know i would be whether i was doing the project or not and that question is how much does this cost you 
Well, when we added up all of the lumber and tools and building materials, now remember, I bought a couple of tools for this project, like the Pazload nailer, I came to a total of $3,500. That's for everything to get the house roof exactly like you see it here behind me. Framed out, wooden, all that stuff, underlayment, all over top. We just ordered the metal roofing a couple of days ago, and that cost us $2,500. So, all in all, it looks like we're going to be right at $6,000 for this new roof on our mobile home. So, a question we don't necessarily get a whole lot of directly, I'm sure a lot of people are probably wondering, and that is, why didn't you just hire a professional to do your roof? Well, good question. We talked to a couple of roofers, and most of them seemed pretty confused at what exactly we wanted to do. Most of the people wanted to just throw down one by four strips on top of the metal roof and put a new metal roof on top and just let it hang over and kind of fly in the wind. That's kind of the mobile home metal roof tactic that's used a lot in our area. I didn't like that. I didn't think that was gonna be good enough quality and, and last and I just didn't wanna do that route. Whenever I talked to a couple other people and explained how I wanted to deck it out and then frame out overhangs and everything, one, you could tell by the person's reaction they weren't really interested in doing all that work and then two they never really offered to do all that work so that information kind of ties into another question of do we regret not hiring a professional to do this job for us it wasn't really an option as far as anyone we could find so it's kind of hard to regret something you didn't have a choice over but that part aside even if we had a contractor who said yes i'll do it for you blah 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 and we are here now ourselves doing it do i regret it when i'm in the moment doing the work yes i will tell you i will pay any amount in the world to have someone else do this for me when i'm done with that work i don't say that it feels really good to be able to say we did this we did this ourselves we were crazy this is insane it's also one of the things we probably would ever want to do once so in that sense no we don't regret not paying a professional to do this What would we do differently if we were starting this project over right now, day one, as horrible as that is a thought to think, what would we do differently? I would have all of the materials ready here on site before we ever started any of it. I would have everything, metal roofing, lumber, every bit of it here. The second thing I would do differently is I would rent a man lift or some kind of articulating off-road ladder on an arm thing maybe a boom lift i don't know what they're called there's a couple of different names but i would rent one of those i would be able to justify renting one because of having all the materials here on site i knew it would be a quicker turnaround of the project and i would want that machine to rent so that it's a lot safer and faster getting on the ladders and moving around up and down up and down over and over and over and carrying the ladders around is no fun but there's no way that we found around it, and so that's kind of our life we've lived doing this project. So, that's the two things. If we had to do this thing over again, what would we do? We wouldn't start until we have every single bit of the materials, and then we would rent a large piece of equipment to lift us up in the air and give us a nice big platform to safely work from and just save a lot of physical strain. Another question we get is, why did we choose metal roofing and not shingles? There were mainly two reasons we chose metal roofing and not shingles. One is the weight of the roofing. Metal roofing is a lot lighter than shingle roofs. And considering what we're putting the roof on, we knew we wanted as light a roof as possible while still having a good quality, long life, do it once, probably never have to do it again roof on our house. The second reason we chose metal roofing over shingles is just purely aesthetic. We like the look of a metal roof. We like the fact that it is not going to get damaged in high winds or storms. We're not going to have pieces of it blowing up, hopefully, and that it's generally low maintenance. I won't say zero maintenance. I think a lot of people assume metal roofing is zero maintenance, which it's not. You're supposed to, about every seven to ten years, replace the screws which I think scares a lot of people, but if you figure how much maintenance you probably have with shingle roof, I don't know. You know, set an alarm clock in 2030, remind me to come back on the roof and swap out my screws. 
I'll be cool with that. So that's the reason we chose Metal Roof for us. Personally, that isn't a sales pitch for Metal Roofing because everyone's situation is unique and different, but that's why we went this route. So these are the most commonly asked or frequently asked questions we've gotten with our roof over on our mobile home. Bear in mind that we're not professionals. So <laughs> of anything, take that away of, we're not a professional, you know, we're doing this to our house. We're not doing this to a commercial structure. And so we're kind of just off on our own area. The way we have done this project is very differently because we are video creators on YouTube. Being a content creator means that we have to be all right with the project suffering real time to produce content for you all to consume. That is something that is very difficult to be able to do from a standpoint of wanting a project done and over with versus a standpoint of properly documenting and teaching or showing and just educating or entertaining whatever you want to say for the viewers right here on the other side of this camera that has been something we have known as we've grown through the you know learning how to make videos and what it does and how it works out kind of thing in life so we knew this project was not going to be very quick we knew this project was not going to be very easy. That's okay. We, we knew this. We knew all this before we jumped into this project. We do a lot of research behind the scenes and a lot of research for probably months before we start anything big to make sure, do we really want to do this? Can we do it? And then how do we do it? The fact that we just start projects and show them right off hand doesn't mean we haven't researched and feel comfortable and safe on our own for what we do. That being said, you're not going to hear me say, this is exactly how you do a metal roof over on a mobile home. If you don't do it this way, you're an idiot. This is the best way and it works for anyone everywhere. It's just not the case. So that's all the frequently asked questions for the roof. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. We love reading them. Otherwise, see you guys next time on the homestead.